He's gone. He's finally gone. Saints have sacked Mauricio Pellegrino, Clive and here. Clive and I are here to uh, celebrate. I mean, we've been saying it for a long time, mate. I mean, actually, after the weekend, for me, he was a dead man walking. I mean, what's your instant reaction to this? Yeah, it's it's not a surprise, but I guess we were all waiting for it maybe Saturday night or yesterday. And you think, well, uh, I don't know what's going on in the inside with Saints, but maybe they're waiting for a, a bit of time to let the dust settle, let the players absorb it and then and then tell the world, you know. But uh, yeah, but it's not the feeling of like when Rupert Lowe got booted out. It's it, it's not the same sort of elation. You're, you're always sad when a, a football person loses their job, no matter how bad we think he was. It's still someone who's trying to do their best and sadly failed miserably. Yeah, I mean, he was a likeable guy around the, around the training ground and that's perhaps the reason why he it also is also a factor why he's got sacked. He's too nice. He was never he was never ruthless enough. He was never fearless. You know, he he was going into games looking to draw. I mean, we've drawn the most amount of games this season, probably a record so far for Saints and we've on, we've drawn so many more than other teams. We've only lost We've only well the, the the team other than us that have lost lost fewer games uh, more games than yeah. us in the Premier League is West Bromwich Albion this season. Yeah, I think quite simply uh, the the draws were disappointing enough because we were well placed to win a lot of those games had you been positive, but it was the totally unacceptable performances and, and quite a few of them. You go back to Leicester at home. Yeah, that happens every now and again. Every team has a bad bad day at the office, but we we were having way too many of them. And it's caught up with him at the end of the day. It probably should have caught up with him at Christmas. I thought the Tottenham performance was at Wembley was totally unacceptable. Tottenham should have really got 10 that day. It was embarrassing. Um, the, the, the new coach. You, you just feel, I, I guess it's just like you feel a little bit cheated when a team doesn't perform. It happens. We all know that's football. Sometimes it, it doesn't go right for you. But when it happens that number of times and then you don't the games that you should win you don't because you're not you're not positive enough there's only one going to be one outcome but what the 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 crucial thing is now that um pellegrino's gone what do we do next what what is saint's next move because i'm afraid the board have been and uh, whoever's owning the club haven't really communicated with the fans right through the season we should have had a striker in last summer we didn't we waited till the very last minute in the transfer window to get Carrillo in um, and nobody else and nobody else. And it was clear where the, where the problem was. I mean, surely the six home games without a goal last season was a clue. <laughs> Come on. And they called Claude last season clueless. Um, this guy starts a, makes a, a, a new definition to the word. I mean... As you say, the results this season have been simply unacceptable. Uh, five games this season we've won in the Premier League and he's, it seems like a manager totally clueless and totally inept of any tactical nous. Uh, everyone's been screaming for 4-4-2 you know, over the last few weeks. Still arrogant, uh, set, set in his ways, playing a 4-2-3-1. And I think last week, you know, or the weekend even, he's, he's got to be that cherry and forced the board to make a change and force them to make action. All that matters from a manager's point of view is how you, obviously there's an awful lot of planning that goes in, but it's that last 20 minutes before the game. Can you get the players motivated? Can you give them the right direction? And can you, probably even more important, when things either go right or go wrong in a game, can you change things by either changing the tactics or changing the personnel in the right way? And I I just, I think he was failing in, in so many of those areas. And, and that's what's done for him in the, at the end of it. But can, more importantly now, what can we do to save ourselves? Who's the next appointment? After the match on Saturday, he even admitted in his press conference to the, to the to media that he admitted his players looked, they looked, they looked, you know, they gave up. And that coming from a manager surely doesn't give any yeah. confidence at all to the team. Yeah. And yeah, well, yeah. I've got I've got the statement here as well from from the club. I'm going to read it to okay. you in case you know you may not have heard it. Um, and also for you, also for you at home. Um, Southampton Football Club would like to place on record our thanks to Mauricio, Carlos, and Javier for their efforts during their time at Southampton, and wishing them all for the future. The club will look to appoint a new manager as soon as possible, with the search for a long-term replacement already underway. Yeah, of course um, they're going to say that, and and you'd hope that something's been lined up 
maybe been lined up before this weekend, maybe they line, line up a couple of months ago. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But there, there are obvious candidates. We're talking about Silva. We're talking about Hughes. And, and the off-the-wall one is Strachan because... But you'd think that if Gordon was going to come in, that would be... I, I don't know whether he'd be looking for a long-term position because you'd think that if, if Strachan was a possibility the club would offer an X amount to come and join for the rest of the season and with a sizable bonus to keep us up as a dangle in the carrot sort of thing because he can kick backsides and uh, that's that's an off-the-ball one. But, you know, and he's got a feeling for the club. Yeah, two things there actually, mate. Two things. First of all, it is going to be financially difficult because they've had to pay millions off to pay for Mauricio this season and whoever comes in, there will be a sizable bonus, as you mentioned to me off-camera, that if he keeps the team up, there's going to be a huge bonus for him too. But what we need yeah. is, is a character to galvanise the team and keep us up. Yeah, well, we, we, you know, Hughes, Mark Hughes, hmm, not everyone's favourite, but I would imagine a disciplinarian and someone who's going to get them fit. Silver, short, again, yeah, yeah, it, it is so difficult. But what a difficult job. What a difficult, with the fixtures that we've got, a squad, you have to rebuild confidence. You have to massively. That that is the problem. The guys, the guys have, they can't play at home. They could play away up, up till Saturday, but they they failed miserably in a crunch game. There's going to be two major pressure games, and that's West Ham and Swansea away. The team have to be hard. They have to be show character, and they have to have tactical nails. Difficult, difficult to get that like out of the disaster that was the Newcastle game. You've got to lift morale, chance with Wigan, chance to, to go out there and, and go and win a game of football. Just winning games of football does lift morale, it does lift confidence. Yeah, I mean, for the short-term future, for the next for the weekend, who would you like to see be in, on that touchline? You know, people have suggested Kelvin Davis, Ruddy Giardi, but neither one of them have managerial experience. Well, you'd hope that, they, that Saints had somebody lined up before the weekend to be honest, and why not? There's there's five days, six days to go till till the game, and why why shouldn't they have somebody lined up? Personally, I I would I'd be quite happy for for Gordon Strachan to come back. I really would. I I think he's he's got that feeling for the club. Sometimes with managers, it's it's some managers fit certain clubs and they don't fit others. And 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 my cut feeling is that Gordon would fit Saints. He's got that affinity. He's got that feeling. He's got that a bit of humour. The fans would be on side. And that is so important right now because we're on the floor. Everybody's like, oh, Saints, bloody hell. We've had it. We're going down. You know, but there's still a chance. You see Stoke, you see Palace, you know, West Brom surely are gone now. So there's still a chance. So you you keep battling till till the end. You have to keep fighting because you just never know with football. But it's going to take a character to go and lift the changing room, to go and lift the club, to lift the fans, because we can do it. Yeah, we can. And I think, um, as John said on the uh, one of the interviews, the reactions the other day, um, we've got a really good squad. And I think, personally, as the suggestions were at the beginning of the season, we should be top half. And we need a manager to match that, um, that, match that ambition. That's why the club have got to make a bold appointment right now. And, and be strong because they, they've taken so much criticism themselves. And I, and I believe rightly so, because they haven't made decisions. They haven't communicated. And now's the time. It really is because, and, and there's no guarantee, even if they make a top appointment, there's no guarantee of staying up. It's going to be really touch and go. Yeah, it was always going to be a gamble um, sacking him this late. And I think, you know, everybody's relieved now. Um, but for me, months Overdue. Yeah, and, and you have to look at, I think, the other teams that have made their changes, other than probably West Brom, there, there's, there's been no, there's, there's always been a bounce. There's always been the new, the new guys come in and done, done well and actually lifted things. Obviously, West Ham are having a bit of a, a, a wobble right now, but they're, they're still above us. You know, Roy Hodgson came in, did particularly well. With Palace did fantastically well. Seeing they'd lost the first what seven games was it, and 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 he's you know he's up against a terrible injury list right now. And but he's he's done tremendously well to get him in with a shout of staying up. So 
new managers have worked all through this division. West Brom have bucked the trend by, you know, Pardew just, the results just haven't gone for him in the vital games. They've come unstuck, but the vital games are coming up for Saints and, and, and we need an impetus. I hope it's someone who's going to get the fans on side, someone who's going to get the players together. Yeah, I agree, mate. And, um, well, I think that wraps it up for our reaction. Let us know your reaction in the comments below. Should he have gone? Is there anybody out there that believes that he should have kept? We should have kept him. Surely there isn't anybody. Freddie, it was 10% apparently on our poll, but I, I haven't... All I've heard from maybe the only argument was, what's the point in changing it now? What's the point? But there always is a point. When you see a performance like Newcastle... There always is a point because a new face can come in and freshen things up and change the whole atmosphere. And we all know that two wins, two wins will get us out of this crap. You know, it will. It will, honestly. And, and, and we all know it. Look at Bournemouth. They've come, you know, and, and they got them against the top teams. It's totally unexpected. Sometimes it's about the attitude of, of the players, the fans, it, all of a sudden a change comes in and hope with a capital H again, Freddie. Let's hope it goes, mate. That's, that's our reaction and leave us your comments below. Was he right to go?